The Odyssey was probably the strangest nightclub of all time. It was a nightclub in Hollywood in the late 1970s, early 80s that was a gay dance club slash teenage nightclub that was open until 5 a.m. We already did one video on the Odyssey's complicated story. It was described in magazine articles as the best nightclub for gay 12-year-olds and those who like gay 12-year-olds, which is just plain creepy. But the creepiest part is that the Odyssey was owned by Eddie Nash, who was probably the most brutal gangster and biggest drug kingpin of this era. This guy was just nasty, basically one of the worst humans to ever walk the earth, and the fact that someone like this owned a 5am nightclub for teenagers is just incredible. And that's only part of the story because there were allegedly some awful things going on at the Odyssey behind the scenes. In late 2021, audio from a phone call leaked online from a man named Richie Albertini, who was involved in Hollywood and organized crime for the past four decades and was a regular at the Odyssey as a teenager. He called into California Child Protective Services to talk about some of the horrific things he witnessed at the Odyssey back in the 1980s. In West Hollywood back then, there was a nightclub that all of us kids hung out at. It was a trafficking mecca. It was called the Odyssey. It was a gay club owned by convicted felon Eddie Nash, trafficker. Any kid that went to Fairfax High School hung out at the Odyssey. Any kid that went to Beverly Hills High School hung out at the Odyssey. We were young, rich kids, and we didn't live like other kids. Albertini claimed he knew many, many secrets about what went down at the Odyssey behind the scenes. Well, I was there six nights a week, minimum. Let what do you, you want to talk about the Odyssey? Do you want sure. photographs? Do you want me to tell you who was selling drugs there? Do you want me to tell you who was laying around in the TV room every night? Do you want me to tell you who was selling their ass? Do you want to know who was getting trafficked? Let's talk. There's all kinds of porn movies that were made at that odyssey of all these young kids. I can name the names. He talked about the drugs and sex and a whole bunch of other things going on at the odyssey at the time. And we covered that in part one. So definitely check out that video for more on the odyssey story. But he also spent time on the call talking about his friend, Robert Arquette from the Arquette acting family. The two were good friends as teenagers. And I will name every friend of his. I've been to his house. I've been to the Arquette house. He went to CES. He hung out mostly at Fairfax High School in the Odyssey. Albertini said Arquette was an Odyssey regular and suffered severe abuse as a teenager. Alexis Arquette was there, Robert Arquette. I knew him as Robert. We used to protect him in school because that poor kid was passed around to more people than your, you got okay. hairs. Albertini claimed he confronted Arquette's sisters about this abuse years later. Well, his sisters knew what was happening and they I did know nothing. His sisters, man. So do I. I had Robert Arquette passed around to everybody. I confronted Patricia and Rosanna about this a couple weeks ago, and they lost their mind. Robert Arquette has an interesting history after the Odyssey. He acted in a few movies, and in the early 2000s, he became Alexis Arquette and transitioned from a man to a woman. This lasted for a few years, and then he transitioned back to a man. Then in 2016, he died at the age of 47 of complications from AIDS. And the timing of his death is a little suspicious. At the time, he was becoming very vocal on social media about his opinions and some of the secrets that he knew. In 2014, Arquette made waves when he claimed he'd had a relationship with actor Jared Leto back when he was Robert, before the transition to Alexis. Shortly after that, he posted a message on Facebook about Will Smith that made headlines, in which he stated that Smith's first marriage ended when his wife walked in on him with another man. Arquette wrote, when Jada comes out as gay and her beard husband admits his first marriage ended when she walked in on him, servicing his sugar daddy, Benny Medina, then I will listen to him. And in the comments, he clarified that the quote-unquote she who walked in on Smith was his first wife, Cherie Zampino. Their marriage ended abruptly in 1995. The Benny Medina referenced in the post as a Hollywood producer and talent manager who has managed the careers of Jennifer Lopez, Mariah Carey, and many others. He was also co-creator of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the show that gave Smith his first big acting role. These are obviously pretty explosive allegations about some very powerful people, and later that year, Arquette was working on a tell-all book filled with other secrets that he knew. Arquette said the book would, quote, blow the lid off of a lot of closeted gay men and women in Hollywood and be so explosive that it would, quote, bring Hollywood to a stop. But he died as he was writing his book, which is definitely suspicious timing. At the time, a friend said, we just lost possibly the greatest Hollywood tell-all book ever. And you just have to wonder what secrets would have been revealed, and it would have been really interesting to hear what he would have had to say about the Odyssey and what went down there.
On his phone call to Child Protective Services, Albertini also talked about Dominic Brascia, another regular at the Odyssey who was allegedly involved in some awful things. This Dominic Brascia guy, I don't, how do I explain him? He looked like a fucking monster. Dominic Brascia and this guy Rademacher, they want to meet those kids at the Odyssey. So they kind of think I'm going to be like their proxy. Brasha wanted me to introduce him to boys at the Odyssey. Now, Dominic Brasha isn't some random guy. He was an actor in some movies during the 1980s, including Friday the 13th Part 5. He later became a radio personality and died in 2018. And what makes these allegations interesting is that Albertini isn't the only one making them. In 2016, teen actor Corey Haim's mother and sister claimed that Haim had been raped as a teenager by Dominic Brasha. Haim's mother claimed she walked in on Brasha on top of her son, pinning him to the ground. She swung a pool cue at him and just missed his head, and she threatened him if he didn't let her son go. Albertini said Brasha was a regular at the Odyssey, along with a friend of his named David Rademacher. These guys were a little bit older than us, and they used to come around and ask to meet young girls and young boys. David Rademacher was. He would feed them narcotics. Rademacher was straight. He liked little kids, but he didn't like boys. Brasha wanted me to introduce him to boys at the Odyssey. Almost two decades later, Rademacher was arrested for murdering a 20-year-old girl named Kimberly Pandelios. The murder was a big story at the time and was featured on the news and even investigated on an episode of Unsolved Mysteries. Remains are identified as those of 20-year-old Kimberly Pandelios, who had disappeared a year before. It was a tragic end to a promising young life. And Richie Albertini was one of the main witnesses who testified against Rademacher at the trial. David Rademacher is currently serving life without the possibility of parole for the trafficking and murder of Kimberly Pandelios. It was me who turned him in when I became aware of it. It was me who testified against him in open court that got the conviction. Look it up. Public records. Like Albertini mentioned, there's official court documents and records of his testimony in the Rademacher trial, so this part of his story definitely checks out. All these interconnecting stories are just wild, and it's even wilder that they all have connections to the Odyssey. It was definitely a strange place, and the comments on our first video are pretty interesting. Some people claimed they were Odyssey regulars, and the place was great, and they never saw anything bad going on. Others claimed that one of the biggest rock stars in the world would send reps to the Odyssey to get teenage boys for parties. Another said that a friend of his is an emotional wreck because of the things he witnessed at the Odyssey as a teenager in the 80s. A couple other people commented about Paul Lind, who was apparently an Odyssey regular. He was an actor in that era who would have been in his 50s at the time. And Paul Lind has a really interesting, mysterious story that we'll get into in an upcoming video. So definitely subscribe so you're notified when it's out, and we'll see you soon.